Hi there, and welcome to the first tutorial in our Repairing Photographs feature. This first tutorial is about colouring black and white photographs. Um, and what we've done for this uh, part is chosen a classic photograph of film star Ava Gardner. Um, now, while we're big fans of black and white photography here at uh, Digital Photography Effects, the effect that you can get from adding colour to uh, a black and white shot such as this can really transform the picture and inject a bit of uh, atmosphere and also some nostalgia into the shot as well. While the process of adding colour to a black and white picture might seem a bit complicated at first, in fact it's actually easier than you think and we'll show you each step of the way how to select and uh, place different colours and shades of colour on the various elements that make up the picture. This is the perfect project for uh, restoring old family photographs and giving them a new lease of life. Now to get started, after we scan the picture in, we uh, are going to open it up in Photoshop and just have a look at the scan and see if there are any blemishes or scratches or any dust um, on the picture that we need to remove before we, we carry on and start to add the colour. So just zoom in on the picture and you'll see here there's a slight mark so have a look around the picture using the zoom tool and also the hand tool and then once you've spotted uh, an area where there's a, a problem use the clone tool to uh, rub out the area that, uh, that's causing the problems now to get rid of this blotch here we're going to choose uh, a soft brush from the clone tool options menu and you can pick a size we've picked around 100 pixels here and we're going to reduce the opacity to around 60%. This uh, helps you avoid any obvious joins when you come to, to clone uh, one area over the next. So to start cloning then, click the Alt key on your keyboard to select the sample point and then just dab gently over the offending area like so to remove the mark. Clicking on the aligned box at the top here allows the clone tool to follow your brush strokes as you move up over the, the area. So this helps to keep the consistency of the pattern in the area that you're cloning out. Now once you have uh, cleaned up the image you're ready to start making your first selection. Now as I said earlier the process of adding colour to this picture is about making selections of all the uh, various elements making up the shot such as the skin, the hair on the model, her mouth, eyebrows, eyes and so on. And you can also add colour to the background here and also to the foreground and objects such as the uh, jewellery, uh, her ring and her bracelet and her pen. Um, some areas will remain black um, and you can add colour to, to certain other areas as well uh, later on but we'll keep some areas black and that will work uh, perfectly well uh, while the rest of the picture is transformed into colour. Now when you're ready to make your selection it's a good idea to zoom in to the area that you're working on. We're going to be moving all around the skin area uh, starting at one point working all, all the way around the image until we get to uh, the starting point. So zoom in to about 100% uh, should do, that's 50%, perhaps 100% will um, sort that out and make sure the screen is free of clutter so that you can get around and, and, and find uh, your way around the selection easily without uh, anything getting in the way. Before we go on any further there's one important point that you need to, to apply to the image right from the start. Most uh, black and white images will obviously be in RGB mode. What you need to do is convert it to CMYK colour. This will allow you to add the colour to the various selections later on. So before you do anything else and make any more selections, uh, go to Image Mode CMYK Colour and make the conversion like so. You won't see any change at the moment, but it will just allow you to um, add colour using layers and adjustment layers later on onto the image. 
Now then when you're ready to make your selection, you can choose from one of the selection tools in the tool palette here. I think for this kind of job, the best tool to use is the Polygon Lasso. It's a lot easier to use than uh, some of the other selection tools for this purpose. So select from the tool options bar and then carefully click and then join, follow the edges right around the skin where it meets the hairline and around the clothes like so. Now we've selected a, a two pixel feather as you can see in the tool options bar but we'll also use a technique in a moment that I'll demonstrate that will smooth out any rough edges and rough joints. Making selections like this does take some practice so don't expect to get it right in one go and don't worry too much in the first instance if you're not quite accurate because you can add and subtract items from the selection later on. It's also worth pointing out that where there's areas of fine hair you can probably just cut straight through those because the colour um, on those won't show through later on. It's really the, where the hair is dark and there's an obvious join. Now once you've made your selection around the, the hair and around the uh, skin and the, the, the clothing, make sure you highlight the eyebrows and eyes because we don't want to change those just yet, we want to turn those into their own separate selection later on. So to add and subtract elements from the main selection you can use the shift key whilst remaining in the uh, selection tool. Holding it down you can click and move the lasso around and that will add to the selection. Similarly you can press the ALT key and that subtracts from the selection so you can easily move add rather, add and remove elements from the picture. Now after zooming out we can see our selection and we can see uh, that everything looks okay so far but we want to make sure that the selection is accurate and that uh, uh, the edges are smooth and there's no sharpness or uh, uh, unrealistic jaggedness to the edges between the skin and the clothes and the hairline and so on. So at the moment we're editing the picture in what Photoshop calls the standard mode. And if you look at the bottom of the tool palette pointing to it here, you'll see that this, there are two icons. One on the left is normally pressed down as standard, and this is the standard mode editing um, scenario in Photoshop. But we, we can edit in quick mask mode. And this allows us to make a masked area of the picture so we can differentiate areas that we're working on and those areas that we want to protect. So after selecting quick mask mode you'll see that the selection turns or remains white, that's what we want, that's what we're keeping, and the areas that we, we don't want to work on um, are um, turn red like so. So what we want to do is zoom into the picture and clean up any edges, of any overlaps or any areas that we've missed using the paintbrush. So click on that and then painting on the image in using having the, the black colour picker selected. This marks out the area that we don't want. So at the moment this part of the skin is an area that won't be um, applied to the selection. reverse the colour to white and you can paint away the masked area to reveal the skin that we want to keep. So work your way around the image and mask off areas that you want to preserve such as the hair, the hairline around here and areas that you want to clean up and reveal, such as 
the hairline around there. Work your way around the image and once you're done you're ready to move on to the next stage. Right, the next stage is to make sure that there aren't any jagged or rough edges so that each selection blends into the next naturally. So to do this select filter, blur and pick Gaussian blur. Now you're still within the quick mask mode here and in the Gaussian blur preview box you'll see a shadow silhouette of the selection. Don't worry too much about this, it won't look particularly clear but if you move the radius value to around 5 pixels this will help to feather the edges of the selection and smooth out any rough joins. So once you've done that click OK OK, because you're making so many selections to this image skin, the hair, the background, the clothes, etc. it's a good idea to save each selection as you go along. This allows you to recall the selections later on make any changes you need to them. So to save the selection go back into the standard edit mode and then you'll go back to your marching ants all around the image showing your selection. Now go to the select menu and go down to save selection and you'll get this dialog box. Give each selection an obvious name, this one is obviously skin and type it in, click OK. And now as you build up your selections each time you need to go back and change them you can just go back to select, load selection and there it is for you to call up and each time you need it you can just go to that menu and it will bring the selection uh, it will make it active again and it will allow you to make changes to extend the selection or subtract from it using the tools we showed you earlier on. OK you can start to add some colour now. Click on the background layer in the layers palette. If you can't see it go to the view menu, not the view menu sorry, the window menu and select layers from the list there. OK. Now the technique we're going to show you um, to add colour to the picture is by uh, adding adjustment layers to the image. Adjustment layers allow you to apply colour and changes to the picture, to the background layer, without actually changing the pixels that make up the original image, which is great for um, allowing you to make changes later on down the line without having to worry about damaging or making irreparable changes to the original picture. So to add a new adjustment layer we're going to choose a curves adjustment layer. So go to layer, new adjustment layer and then from the list here you'll see lots of different types of adjustment layer that you can use. Levels, curves, colour, brightness and contrast. Well the curves one allows us to um, get a lot of control over the, the weight and the tone of the colours uh, that we want to apply to the picture. So we're going to go with curves adjustment layers. So select that and give it a name. So we'll call this skin base. What we'll do here is start off by building up the skin um, color and tone just as painters do when they are painting a portrait to build a base on which to uh, add the color and it gives the, the picture a lot more tone and strength and depth later on. So after adding the name, click on this button here. This allows you to uh, create a mask of the other layers so that you can add uh, um, colour to those later on. Once you've done that, click OK. So with the Curves dialog box on display, you can see that because you've converted the picture to CMYK four channels, um, you can select channels individually and apply colour and adjust the tone for each one. So this will take a bit of experimentation but what you want to do is build up a whole series of adjustment layers of the skin to, to build up the tone and to remove any trace of any black pixels coming through from the black and white image. You want to get the colour depth uh, all the way through to the uh, bottom layer. 
OK, so just for example, if we select cyan, and you can move, clicking on the graph here, you can move the graph like so, and you'll see instantly that you're starting to get some colours into the picture. And by mixing the colours, you can vary the tone and shade. Now you can see instantly what a difference just a couple of small edits make to the picture. So build up your selection as you go along and add two or three um, skin bases to get that uh, um, vibrant and realistic looking skin tone and colour to your picture uh, and it will help to remove any background uh, trace of uh, the, the black and white pixels seeping through from the background image. Once you've selected the colours for each adjustment layer you can then go back to the CMYK setting at the top and adjust the brightness of the, uh, the image like so. OK, so here we've added three layers to the skin um, and we can, we wanted to create sort of a warm effect to her skin but you can obviously um, use whatever tone or, or, or colour temperature you want for your picture because each picture will obviously be very different. Now the rest of the project is really a, sort of a repeat of what we've done uh, with the skin. It's selecting the other elements and we'll move on to the background curtain here in a moment and then um, creating a quick mask and cleaning up the selection and then adding an adjustment layer to that selection um, and then applying the colour. So to get started we'll go back to the background layer make sure that's live and click on the lasso tool again so when you're moving the lasso tool around tricky selections such as the hair make sure there's no background detail that you've missed because uh, that will show up and you've got a, a black and white edge to the image which, which you don't want at all so just to remind you how you can increase the selection area click on the lasso tool, make sure it's live and then click on the shift tool the shift key rather on the keyboard and click on part of the selection line adjacent to where you want to extend the selection area and once you've clicked you can let go of the mouse and then draw your line accordingly and you can let go now of the um, shift key on the keyboard it's still within the um, adding to selection mode if you like so you can just click to add your selection and then join up the selection to the original starting point here double click and you'll see that the line moves around the edge like so okay just a quick recap then with our selection made we go into the quick mask mode and then the red areas are the areas that we're protecting we don't want to change these just now we want to work on the, the black and white area here which is the background curtain so this is our selection area now we can add and subtract anything we've missed to this um, area using the paintbrush in the quick mask mode paint in black to add to the mask like so so this is rubbing out some of the selection alternatively you can paint in white and this extends the selection like so so when you're rubbing away the red that's extending the selection so it's useful to zoom right up and just make some fine tune uh, edits to this so that uh, the edges are nice and um, even and accurate, accurate and there's no overlapping or, or stray 
uh, strands of hair or details from, from other areas there are going to be selections later on ok so with your quick mask made and, and everything in uh, uh, good order go back into the standard edit mode actually before you do that remember that each time you make a selection um, before you come out of the quick mask mode you want to apply that Gaussian blur filter to the selection again again this smooths out any joins and any edges and makes the selection look more natural so once you've done that you can go back into the standard edit mode and there's your selection already for the next stage ok building up your selections one at a time save each selection and give it a name and there you have that you can recall that the background later now and make any additional changes you want to it now again just as you did with the skin and you've got your selection made make sure you're in the background layer at the foot of the layers palette and go and add another curves adjustment layer like so and give it a, an obvious name such as background click on that and you'll get the curves dialog box appearing again and you, then just as you did with the skin you can go through each channel and select the colour that you want it's worth noting that you don't want to choose a background colour that's going to sort of be too garish or upstage the main uh, subject of the picture and for this we've used a, a sort of pastel shade trying to get the, the golden effect of perhaps a theatrical curtain something like that the important thing that we tried to do was to make sure that the, that the background colours didn't interfere with the actual overall impact of the, uh, of the picture so we've ended up with this kind of look which fits in well to the subject that we've got here now if you wanted to change any of the shadows you can see that some shadows around the curtain here you can choose the black channel and move that around to brighten up any low lights or in fact increase any shadow areas it's worth noting that if you overdo this you'll end up with some distortion so if you are going to mess about with shadows zoom in close to the area so that you can make sure that there's no um, color deterioration in any um, shadow areas that you that you apply now I've jumped ahead a bit here but as you can see we've built up a whole range of selections that comprise the image with the skin, the curtain, hair, lips, eyebrows and so on we're going to work on the eyes now so um, just a feeling to call up the eye selection we've divided the eyes into the whites of the eyes and the pupils but we'll start with the, the whites of the eyes and we'll call up that selection like, like so I'll just zoom in a little bit here now again making an adjustment layer a curves adjustment layer for the eyes we can control the colour and the tone now obviously the whites of the eyes we don't want to have any colour necessarily but we might want to brighten them up a little bit so while we don't need to go into the individual channels we'll stay in the CMYK mix channel setting and then use the, the graph to lift the whites, brighten the image or darken the image we don't want to overdo it because if the, the eyes are too bright it just won't look realistic so we want a nice subtle lift that doesn't overcook the effect too much now again we're going to do the same by selecting pupils or the iris from other of the eye it doesn't matter if you've got the pupil in there because that's obviously black and that's not going to really change you've got black and white there the reflection of the eye that's okay 
to make your selection around the, the iris and then add an adjustment layer just like the last uh, one where are we there we go call it iris or eye colour click on that and then choose your colour now again select the different channels to apply the colour and you'll start to see colour come through so you can select the colours like so for the eyes it's always a good idea to get the colours right according to, to the model to, if you know what colour the model's eyes were that, that does help um, we're going to choose a nice soft blue for this particular picture so the idea with colouring the eyes is not to to overdo it, if you see we can really make them look extremely unrealistic however there's certain translucency and transparency to, to the eye itself which does help to keep this, the colours soft and you can get some very pleasing very natural effects again you don't want to overpower the colour so that it doesn't look realistic or, or, or stand out um, but you can certainly soften it down going back into the CMYK channel and lightening it up a bit or, or darkening like so this is where it pays off to make your selections um, in one go so here we've made the eye selections we've doubled them up and this will help when you come to colour in because you'll get exactly the same colour levels and colour intensity uh, over one selection it's much better than doing one eye individually as one selection and another eye as another later on because you'll never quite get the right colour tone and um, doing it this way one selection for both eyes or eyebrows will actually make the, the, the colours uh, a lot more even and uh, a lot more natural looking now we can start to see the colours really coming through here I just want to point out items such as bracelets and, and jewellery that are, are white or, or shiny or metallic you won't need to really add any colour to them just as you did with the, the whites of the eyes you can use the curves CMYK channel just to lift up the, the brightness a little this will give it a, a luminous uh, feeling so don't think you have to add colours we've obviously added some colours here to some of the gemstones we've made these into a selection and then um, turn them into uh, red rubies before you finish off have a good look around to make sure there are any areas that you've missed you can see there's some um, problems with the hair here now what you can do after you flatten the image in other words merge all the layers together is you can clone out some of these problem areas so where there is tricky and complex patterns and shapes around the hair of your model you can sort this out later on once you flatten the image although if you can get it as accurate as possible when you're making the selections right at the start this will help uh, to keep things a lot simpler the further you go down the line now right at the end you can add another layer a blank layer or a copy of the background layer popping it right at the bottom of the um, the list of all the layers you've built up here you can paint on any highlights or any blusher on the model or any highlights on, around the lips using the, uh, the paintbrush and the, the colour palette um, to, uh, to add these effects by using the overlay blending mode this will keep things bright and crisp and you can adjust the opacity of the effect so that uh, the colours you're adding and the, the, the dabs of, of colour that you're adding say on, on, on the cheeks don't overpower the picture so if we turn this right up 
you'll see that it looks totally out of place but by lowering the opacity right down you can make the effect much more subtle and acceptable so use the overlay, overlay blending mode to do that now once you're happy with all the layers and you're ready to finish off make sure each one is actually activated and then go to layer flatten image this will then merge all the layers into one single uh, composite image and then you're ready to print the picture off now with all the layers merged into one it's a lot easier to go in and make any last minute fixes uh, cloning out any stray uh, selections or any problem color areas that you want to get rid of so work your way around the image and any areas you spot use a small clone tool a small brush rather than the clone tool a nice soft brush and keep the opacity down to around 50-60% that way there's no visible joins that are going to show it and just work your way around any edges you might have missed and this will help to fine tune the picture and make it a lot more realistic now once you've done that you're more or less ready to go and output the picture so really recapping it's all about making selections and adding adjustment layers to the image and to the selections to add your color it's uh, quite a repetitive task and it does take some practice to get the selections right particularly around areas such as hair and around tricky edges around clothing and where the clothing meets skin and so on but with practice you, you can uh, create some very pleasing results and uh, uh, really transform a black and white picture into a into a, a color um, photograph that uh, that really looks very very striking